Good morning. It is a beautiful day on the farm. And I don't know, I'm just, I woke up feeling ready to be productive and like just put 100% effort into everything. So I have a feeling that it is going to be a great day. <laughs> Okay, so I took a defender, a defender, the defender, out to the bean field here. And I would like to say, so if you notice, it has a super extra long bed on it. I think it's like seven foot. We use absolutely every square inch of it. So it's kind of nice to have such a long bed, but also at the same time, we fill it up with stuff. Anyways, here's the bean field. Looking very nice. I'm out here. This is the drip field, so you guys know this field doesn't have a pivot on it. It uses drip tape irrigation, which is all underground. So we only water half of it at a time, so like either the north side or the south side, and I'm gonna switch that over right now. So here are our controls here. Let's just look. So this is open here. That's on the south side. The north side's closed, so I'm going to be closing the south sides opening the north sides because it has run its course and we're ready to move it over. Turning this makes me feel like I work at a fire station or something. I don't know. I just feel like a handle like this should be on a fire hydrant of some kind. It makes me feel like I'm fighting fires. I'm really just watering beans. I lost you in the weeds for a little bit there. <laughs> oh, I can hear the water moving around. Okay, I should really, I need to bring a sharpened shovel or something out here to get all these weeds down. Because before you know it, it starts with just a few weeds around a well or something. And then before you know it, they start traveling all into the field. So I should really be chopping these down as I'm out here. I'll bring a shovel back. Now we're going to, Open this one, Ooh, if I can get it. I was going the wrong way. Got it now. <laughs> All right, seed corn update for everyone. Um, one of the most common questions I think I get asked, uh, besides I've never heard of seed corn or that there were male and female seed corn plants, um, is how can you tell which ones are males and which ones are females? So looking down the row, you can see that the male right here is tasseling before the female. Um, it's on purpose. Just want the male pollen to pollinate the female corn plants. Also, the seed company comes along and puts these orange tags on the row of the male seed corn. So we know this is block 90 and then that's block 91 and then it's uh, every four rows. So if you can't see the tassel or the orange thing, I mean, you can see here's four females, one male. That's how, that's how you know. Um, but you can see this is a female row, no tassel popping yet, but you can see the ear of corn with its cute silks coming out. Here's one that looks a little crazier. Ooh, this is a, oh my goodness, this is a triple ear, wow. Um, so uh, this, Male pollen is start to shake out, pollinate the female corn plants. And then as soon as this is done pollinating, we will come through with my favorite job of the whole year. Does anybody know what it is? If you've watched videos from last year, you know, the best job in the whole world is destroying males. We take the boom off the Miller sprayer and we put four giant chopping blades on it. And I get to spend maybe four or five days in the cab just mow them over. It's super fun. Sorry. So that job will be coming soon. But for now, we're just waiting on this pollination here to uh, start some corn production. And then uh, this corn will be used as seed next year. Hence the name seed corn. So I feel like I've said this a million times already. But no, there's no actual like male and female parts 
separately on this, each plant. Each plant has both male and female reproductive parts because it's a plant, but we're just using one as a male and one as a female. And it's just easier to distinguish that way. I swear, you guys are gonna be farming experts by the time I'm done with you. So I came out to grandma's raspberry patch for a little mid-morning snack, met with disappointment, as I think this is the last good raspberry. Hopefully there's no bugs in it. Ooh. That's it for raspberries this year. They were good while they lasted. Rick Boardman shop, the guy who does our spray. We're getting our fields lined up to have a sponge side put on and they're about ready to take off. Some of the fields are flooding, and so we have a booster pump running so we can uh, drain them out so we can save a little bit of the crop. As you can see, the corn is buried in the water out here, and it'll be a big dead spot if we don't pump it out. So we have the 7810 out here hooked up to a booster pump. I come out here every couple hours just to check on it. And it's just pumping it right in the ditch. We have another booster pump that's out here permanently, but it's so clogged full of corn stalks, it's not working, so we had to bring this one out. We dug it out from the weeds. This is something my grandpa had way back when. Walking out here, you can see all the leaves are stripped up and that, that hurts the plant it's just damaging and uh, not to mention uh makes it more susceptible to disease and here's the worst part see this corn that is from one row over it is falling down and so the biggest problem with this is when we come through the combine the snoot's going to go right here and have to pick this plant back up and hopefully while it's doing that, not fall over or lose the ear right in front of the combine. And there's just pockets all throughout the field like that. There's some more. And it's just 100 mile an hour winds, that'll do that. Any corn, I don't care what hybrid. So it, it's coming back up. It'll, it'll straighten back up a little more, but the good news is Tassels and silks. I did that backwards. Silks. Tassels. See how I hit this plant? See the little powder come off of it? Yeah. We're pollinating out here. It's a good sign. and get out of the defender. Come with me to start this pivot. It's on one of my bean fields. All right, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is put my hair up so I don't get scalped by the PTO shaft. Next, I'm gonna put some earplugs in so that I can hear when I'm 50 and 60 years old. And next I'm gonna put gloves on because I'm gonna be touching some oily stuff. Okay, so I guess I didn't need to put any earplugs right away, but that's okay. It's very peaceful now. Um, I can't even hear myself talk. 
first thing I'm doing is checking the drip oil and it is full, so I don't need to add any. That's nice. I really like these new blue containers we got. Okay, now I'm gonna come around the back side here and check the engine oil and we are golden. Next, I'm gonna make sure that both of these switches are on start. So that one's on start. And then this one is also on start. Next, we get to grease the PTO shaft. Um, don't worry, I just filled, or just replaced the tube of grease. I didn't fill it. And then I also got a brand new battery. forest or something of corn midwest things right okay this is another well motor that i need to come spray or chop these weeds at it's just like a jungle out here um but i'm gonna do all the same steps over again all right so say it with me you guys we're gonna check the drip oil grease the pto shaft check the engine oil um uh, make sure that the switches are on start not run I got kind of a jaunt over to the box over there, but I'm going to crank this up so that it's pumping 480 volts, and then we can start the pivot, and we're starting this one at one inch. That engine, when I started it, flung a mouse nest out at my face. Low light of my day. All right, water is starting to come out. Got to weed through the jungle here. Call this good. We're out at our next pivot starting it. And this one I'm standing like the box is pretty much right under where the pivot is. So as soon as I start it, I'm going to feel refreshed because it's pretty hot today. So I'm excited to get, get a little wet. Okay, so for some reason, when I press start on this, the circle stayed black, which means something is wrong. It's safetyed out. So I'm going to press start and hold in the safety override. So it's just gonna go no matter what, but I'm only gonna hold the safety override for a little bit um, because if you hold it for too long, stuff can break, the pivot can run itself over, all these types of things. So I'm gonna hold in safety override to try and just get it started. We'll see if that works. Good news, it worked. Okay, don't mind my reflection, but do you see the black line is where the pivot is and I wanna run an inch, but it won't run a full circle because this is where the farm is. So I have these two lines green. So I'm running it at a half inch, so it'll do a half inch. And then cause it's green, it'll bounce, put another half inch, bounce. So when it ends up back here, we'll have an inch and an inch. Okay, watch out for the grasshoppers. But let's just enjoy some time in the water here. Ah, refreshing. Plenty of oil, plenty of drip oil. And the pump is building pressure and we will have another pivot started. And on to the last pivot to start. Um, this four wheeler lost its windshield in the windstorm. That was that happened last week. It looks so weird without it. Come on. Okay, this one is definitely clogged. Have to come back and get that. Oh, hey, there we go. See, much better. So we got this pivot running, putting on an inch, and we will come back in a few days to nicely watered crops. Thank you so much for following along on my days. I love making vlogs for you guys. 
I feel like it really cements the knowledge in my head when I can teach it to you guys. And I like knowing that I have a listening audience that is excited to learn about agriculture as much as I am. I love farming with you guys. <laughs> See you next video.